We're going to go ahead and begin our meeting tonight. Um, for our introductory thoughts tonight, I wanted to speak to you concerning a breach, a hole, a flaw. But that's not where we're going to end. First of all, in the beginning, God created. And we know that what God created was flawless, it was perfect, it was whole, but we know it didn't stay that way. It stayed that way until sin entered in. And sin created a breach. It created a hole or a flaw in the work of God. Now we know where sin begins. Its origin is our enemy, the devil. And his intention is only to steal and to kill and to destroy. So we know that anything that comes from him has to be of that same nature. Sin, it destroys and it tears down. It brings destruction where once was perfect. What once was in good standing, sin will ruin. Isaiah 30 verse 13 says, Therefore this iniquity, and we can say all iniquity, shall be unto you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Yeah, amen. Once, uh, one, one way that breach is defined is an infraction or a violation of a law or an obligation. But a second definition of the word breach is a rupture, broken, or torn condition. So first of all, we see that sin is this infraction. That's the initial breach. It's an infraction against the law of God. But then its effects are to rupture and to tear and to separate where there was once unity and connection. So it's ripping, it's creating this gaping hole between God and man. Now, when there was a breach in the wall of a city, you think of the, the times in the scriptures when they had walled cities, fortified cities. If there was a breach in that wall, there was a disadvantage on a number of levels for the people dwelling therein. It allowed entrance for their enemies to come in, but it also allowed for good things within the city to escape. Yeah. Um, that was Matthew Henry's commentary on the breach. It lets evil from without in, but it also lets good from within escape. That's what a breach can do. Yeah. And remember when Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall, yeah. the enemies, when they heard that he was repairing the breaches thereof, they were angry. Yeah. They were wroth because their advantage was quickly disappearing. Yeah. They were not going to have as easy access to get into this place as they once had before. Yeah. Now, when a physical body is well and healthy, there's not a lot of chance for disease or infection to enter in. But when there's an injury, a cut, or a breach, mm -hmm. then it's more easily accessible for all of these things, these dangers to come in. Even so, our enemy, he tempts. His temptation is seeking for us to make place for him. That's a breach. Mm -hmm. And then he can bring in infectious diseases for our faith and our spirit, and he can contaminate to destroy. But in creating that breach, it also allows a vacuum to, for good things that the Lord has given to be taken out. So this breach is very dangerous. Lamentations 2.13 speaks of a great breach like the sea. A breaking or tearing in the beginning might seem very small, maybe even insignificant. But it will become worse if it's not mended. Just the passing of time and events, it corrodes and erodes, and it makes that breach worse. It'll continue to worsen if it's not mended. And of course, with sin, the entrance of sin, um, it hastened this deterioration. With each sin and transgression that was committed, this breach just tore open even larger. The scripture also speaks of a collective breach mm -hmm. that um, sh was shared by many, talking about the people, Israel, making a breach in the covenant of God itself. Now, we know that the Lord won't allow his covenant to remain in such a state. It will not be broken. It will not be a waste place. The covenant of the Lord must be whole and complete and lacking nothing. So the Lord, for his glory and the benefit of his people, went about to seek for a repairer of the breach. Um, first of all, in 2 Kings uh, 12, Joash knew that it wasn't right for even the house of the Lord to be in ruin, to have breaches. He says, let the priests take to them every man of his acquaintance and let them repair the breaches of the house, wheresoever there be any Amen. breaches found. So just as the house of the Lord was 
repaired, where there were breaches found. More importantly, the covenant of God himself will be repaired. There will not be a breach left. But the Lord made it clear not just anyone could repair this breach. Uh Jeremiah 15, 1 said, Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. We know Moses interceded for the people on one occasion where there was a breach and the Lord repented him of the evil that he was going to do. Moses prevailed in that situation and Samuel also, he interceded for the people. These holy, godly men could do this. But when it came to sin and the breach that sin had made, not any of these godly men could prevail because it was not sufficient. They were not sufficient of themselves. Ezekiel twenty two thirty says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. The Lord makes it very clear that he exhausted the human resources. There was not one, no, not one that could build up the wall again, fill up the gaping hole left by the breach. None was adequate to do so. There was not one that was so substantial in that time. But we do know, Isaiah fifty nine sixteen, the Lord saw this condition. I saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. Amen. So no man was found. So God prepared one, the repairer of the breach, as Christ is referred to in the prophets. His own arm brought salvation. God is jealous for his name and his covenant and his purchased people. So he will undertake the work of repairing this breach, the damage that the wicked one and sin had brought in. Now, we've all seen pictures of the cross in in our current generation where there's a huge chasm and the cross is like a bridge between God and man. That's what we've seen. But as I thought about this, I thought that this lacks substance because there still leaves this gaping hole between God and man, even with Christ's cross being the bridge between. But I thought of it as Christ filling up this hole and making it complete again, filling up that which lacked until it was whole and perfect once again. Now you think about where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So Christ filled this breach. Um, in this world, when a breach or a tear or uh, some sort of um, fragment like this is repaired, there's a weakness in that structure where that thing has been repaired. There might be a weakness so that something can penetrate in that same spot once again because of the weakness. But it's not so when the repairer of the breach came to bring salvation. This is the strongest point now. It will not be broken through again. The Lord made this repair the strongest than ever was before. Now, Isaiah 30, verse 26, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days, in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, and healeth the stroke of their wound. This is the day when the light of the world came and filled up that breach, the place that was lacking. Jesus built the wasted places that sin and the devil had brought destruction to, reclaiming it for his father's kingdom. So in in entering into our meeting tonight, what I was considering the most was the greatness. We know that we've begun to see the greatness of this chasm that sin created. And think about the substance of Christ being much more sufficient to fill this place. And we're going to see more of him tonight. He is large enough that we can continue to look upon him and study him and seek to know him more. And there's still yet to be had. So tonight when we come together, let us seek, let us seek with great rejoicing and thanksgiving this Christ who is sufficient, who filled the breach and receive of the ministry that he has, which will strengthen and fortify. Amen. Amen.